Hello everybody and in today's video I want to cover how I created a separate IP network for security reasons as well as some hardware upgrades I did along the way. If you want to find out more about how to do this and potentially make your network more secure then please watch the rest of this video and as usual please give it a like if you find this useful. For many years I've been a huge fan of Blue Iris and I continue to think it's one of the best and most flexible solutions out there. For applications that have different manufacturers cameras, it's still one of my top recommendations. I'll post some links to some of the videos I did on the topic if you want to find out more about what I did with my setup. As I'm always looking to improve home network security, and I've been using VLANs for IoT devices and other network needs for a long time, I've always blocked my IP cameras from accessing the internet, but I wanted to move all the security cameras onto their own network for proper isolation, yet still be able to access them remotely. Currently, I'm running two different systems. I have a Blue Iris with my Amcrest cameras, and for about a year now, I've been running a few Unify indoor cameras, and recently added a Unify NVR to manage those cameras and provide a foundation that I could scale in the future as it's kind of expensive to replace everything at once. So I needed to be able to run both Blue Iris and Unify Protect on this new network so that everything would be isolated and benefit from the additional security without losing remote access or functionality. In order to isolate your cameras on a VLAN, you need a firewall and switches that support VLANs, including PoE switches, if you're going to drive any of your cameras from them. I have several PoE switches, but the one in my garage, which drives almost half of my cameras, was a traditional unmanaged PoE switch, and it needed to be upgraded to a managed switch so that I could provide support for VLANs. You can use your favorite brand of uh, PoE switches, but I chose to pick up a USW Lite 16 PoE from Ubiquity. The cost of the switch was pretty reasonable, and it comes with eight 1 gig PoE Plus ports that has a power budget of about 45 watts, plus an additional eight 1 gig LAN ports, which should be more than enough to drive the six cameras that are currently attached to it, and still leave me a little bit of room for growth. IP cameras typically draw about three to four watts, depending on the camera, which means my total power dissipation will be around 18 to 24 watts, which is kind of like where I like to be. I don't like to stress the power capacity of a PoE switch more than about 50 to 70% for reliability reasons. Once I installed it and adopted it into the Unify controller, it was quickly running and the cameras was ready to be assigned to the new network once it was created. Now that the PoE switch was set up, it was time to create both a wired and a wireless network for the cameras. You can do this with any VLAN aware network switch and a firewall that supports creating VLAN interfaces, but in my case, I'm using my UDM Pro SE to create my new VLAN network. Typically, to create a, a VLAN using a non-unified switch, you create a virtual interface, give it an IP range and DHCP server, and then log into each individual switch's interface to assign the ports that you needed. With Unify, you can log into the controller, into the settings, select networks, and then create a new network. For my application, I'll call it CameraNet and give it an IP range of 192, 168, 100, 0, and make it a slash 24. It'll automatically create the DHCP server for me. Next, I want to go into the advanced and select manual so that I can change the VLAN ID to 100. This isn't mandatory, but I like to keep the VLAN ID consistent with the subnet to make it easier for me to remember and identify. This is pretty much it in creating a wired network. For reference, I'll put some links of other videos I did in creating VLANs on some different devices, and if you want to take a deeper dive into the topic. Now that the wired network is complete, we need to create a camera Wi-Fi network so that we can provide any wireless cameras that we add the ability to attach to our new camera net. Selecting the Wi-Fi tab will create a new wireless network, call it camera Wi-Fi, and give it the password. Then under network, we'll assign it to the camera net, which is the VLAN we created earlier. This will route all the traffic from the wireless Wi-Fi into the VLAN that we created. Lastly, if applicable, assign the new Wi-Fi network to any specific access points or groups, depending on the configuration that you have. Also, depending on the hardware that you have, you may not see this option. It just may automatically assign it to all of your access points. In my case, I'm just going to add it to all the APs because I can put wireless cameras anywhere 
and that way I'll have full coverage all the way around the house, both indoors and outdoors. The next step is to set up the firewall rules to create isolation. What we want is the camera network to be isolated from the rest of the network and not communicate with anything else, especially our main network. The reason is most security cameras have a couple of flaws. The first is many manufacturers don't support their cameras with fir firmware updates they don't provide any auto update features. Secondly, if it's an external IP camera, it can actually be removed and easily be unplugged and somebody with a laptop can just plug in and access your network, which is a real issue if your cameras are on your main network. Having network isolation helps keep the camera network away from your main network, so even if they get in, they can't get access to anything. In terms of firewall rules, you need a rule that allows your main LAN to communicate with your VLANs when it's needed. You also need a rule that blocks your VLANs from communicating with any other network. And you need rules that block your VLANs from accessing gateways and gateway ports such as 80, 443, and 22 to gain access to any of your configuration screens. You'll need to reference documentation on your own particular firewall to know how to create these rules but I'll quickly go through the rules I created using the UDM Pro. If you don't have a unified firewall, you can skip ahead to the next section. The first set of rules are universal to all VLANs, meaning they'll apply to all the VLANs on your network, not just this new camera network. The first rule is to accept established and related, which means that once I initiate a connection, it'll be allowed to communicate until it's interrupted. The second rule is to allow access to the VLANs from the main network. And the third is to block all inter-VLAN communication. This prevents traffic from any of the VLANs to communicate to others. As for specific rules for this camera network, there are two that are needed. The first is to block the camera network from all other gateways. This rule uses an IP group to simplify the grouping of multiple IPs. If we look at the group, it lists all the other VLAN gateways in my system. The second specific rule is to block the gateway ports. This rule denies access to UDM ports 80, 443, and 22. And as you can see, this also uses an IP group, which identifies all the gateways in my network, and uses a port group, which defines the ports to be blocked, which as I mentioned is 80, 443, and 22. Now that we have our infrastructure in place and we've tested all the connectivity and isolation, it's time to move both the Unify NVR and the Blue Iris NVR and all the cameras over to the new camera net VLAN. There's a bunch of different ways to do this, but this is how I did it. Let's first start with the Unify NVR. As I didn't want to take any chances and I wanted to simplify the process, the first thing I did was to remove and forget all the cameras that were on the NVR. And I do understand that I'm going to lose all the recordings, but that's a choice that I was willing to make. It doesn't really bother me if the recordings are still there. The reason I did this was because everything would get a new IP address when I changed the ports in the managed switch so that all the cameras would be detected correctly. Once that was done, I logged into my switches and assigned the NVR and the cameras to the new camera net. And I reattached each Unify camera to the NVR. After a few minutes, all the cameras were reattached and ready to go. With the Unify NVR configured, and the cameras attached to it, it was now time to move over to the Blue Iris configuration and move that to the new network. The first thing I did is to remove all the fixed IPs from the cameras. I had created fixed IPs so that I could both block access to the internet as well as to simplify the Blue Iris configuration. So that the cameras would get a new IP, I needed to remove the fixed IP addresses. The next step is to configure all the switch ports for all the cameras and assign them to the camera net. I configured each port that had a camera so that I could use the camera net. Once that was done, I rebooted and everything and all the cameras were assigned to the new camera net and had the proper IPs. They all now had a 100.xxx on them. I did have to go into the Blue Iris camera settings and fix the IP configuration manually so that Blue Iris would know where the cameras are and would detect them correctly. With everything configured and rebooted, everything worked on the internal network as it was supposed to and as it did before. But everything was now setting on a VLAN, which was much more secure. The final stage was to be able to get everything to work remotely. With the Unify Protect, this isn't really an issue as Unify products all communicate through the UI portal. So remote access isn't really a concern. 
However, with Blue Iris, there's not a real easy way to do this unless you use a third-party application, such as OpenVPN, WireGuard, or some other method such as Tailscale. If you've seen any of my videos on Tailscale, you know that that's my preferred method, and I use Tailscale Subrouter to access everything on my network that I need to get to. I'll post links in the description on Tailscale and creating a Tailscale subnet router if you want to set up your own or you want to learn more about this awesome solution. The final step is to change the configuration of the Blue Iris app to call out the new IP address and you're good to go. I'm now able to access both the Unify and the Blue Iris from my mobile device and retain the security of having all my security cameras on their own network. In retrospect, I knew better and I should have done this a long time ago. I gained security without losing any of the functionality and I continue to use both systems as I migrate over time to the Unify system. And I don't feel the pressure to do it quickly since everything is working correctly. I'll leave links to more information on most of these topics. If you guys want to know more about anything or any specific thing, please post it in the comments. One of the best ways to support this channel is to like and subscribe. So if you found this useful, you know what to do. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.